So uh, let me introduce uh, our next speaker. Um, uh, his name is Raghuram Banda. He's a solution architect at uh, Entiros uh, Integration AB, uh, a Swedish company. Uh, he is uh, highly experienced in uh, evaluating and implementing an enterprise API management platform. And uh, without further ado, uh, let's have Raghuram on the stage. Hi, Raghu. Hi. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, share your presentation. Oh, yeah, that's yes. good. It looks yep. uh, good. It looks good enough. Okay. Right. Uh, this uh, all, all set for you. I'll come back uh, five minutes before your talk for any uh, for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, my name is Raghu. Uh, I'm going to speak about enterprise API management in uh, Agile integration. Uh, if we start with the agenda uh, to understand uh, what we're going to speak today, uh, we're going to start with uh, looking at the new integration architecture um, and then agile integration. And then we understand how it uh, leads us to the API management and its importance. And then how should we use GitOps framework uh, when it comes to API management? Let me just a second. So if we look at the new integration architecture, um, I'm speaking of like most of the company, they might have already implemented um, into the different areas that we see here. If you see, uh, we have REST APIs and then we have microservices as an architecture. Uh, and then when it comes to development, uh, we have CI, CD, uh, continuous integration and continuous uh, deployment. Uh, and then we have containers where we deploy applications as containers. And then infrastructure, the cloud is being the preferred um, deployment um, area where we want to deploy the applications. And it might be the case that uh, there are some companies still, they do have on-prem, uh, which means sort of a hybrid setup with cloud and on-prem both. And there can be some companies who still have on-prem, but this is sort of the roadmap that we evolve the architecture towards to facilitate the application integration. Uh, in a most efficient way. And then if you look at the agile integration, um, this is well explained by Red Hat, but if we try to uh, understand at a high level, uh, there are three key pillars in agile integration, uh, distributed integration, APIs, and then the containers. Um, and then in the bottom, you see the tools and different processes. Um, and if we have to say agile integration, it's an approach uh, which is a container based decentralized and microservices aligned architecture uh, for application integration. Um, and if we get into a little bit of uh, details on what we mean by that, uh, when it comes to distributed integration, uh, this empowers a distributed integration architecture rather than having a traditional centralized integration uh, which you, you usually see. Um, this means in short that you would like to have each product team to define and deploy the integration patterns uh, that they need with agility. Um, and then when it comes to APIs, um, it's about exposing the key assets in the company, which can be reused by different parts of the organization. And also you would like to expose the APIs to um, the partners outside the company. Um, so this means the APIs can be deployed together uh, with the containers to different environments. And when it comes to containers, um, they are the uh, underlying deployment uh, platform uh, that allows the exact service to be deployed in a specific environment. Um, and also it helps you to integrate with your CI CD pipelines and, uh, and your different tool chain. Um, so then the question comes here, when we deal with uh, the agile integration approach, uh, is building and exposing APIs, is, is it just enough or do we need uh, something more uh, that helps this? Um, so if we see how we relate um, to the three pillars, on the right hand side, you, see, you can see microservices that can be deployed as containers and then you can see the API management um, that plays a major role, which means that you would want to expose your APIs um, um, when you say expose, like allowing the consumers to use them, but also you need a efficient uh, platform where you can actually manage your APIs. Um, and then you would like to 
uh, extend the capabilities around the, um, you know, different aspects that are dealt while using the APIs. Um, and then you have the container platform in the bottom uh, that allows uh, not only the APIs to be deployed, but also the API management to uh, be deployed in the same platform um, along with the microservices uh, that we are uh, seeing here. So if you look at the key capabilities, uh, we try to divide them into three different areas. Uh, you have the control, visibility, and flexibility. Um, we get to know more as we progress, but in this case, these are um, you know, main um, categories that we list here. Uh, when it comes to control, uh, you have security. It's around um, how do you secure your APIs and how do you leverage the um, authentication patterns that are available when you actually use an API management platform. Um, and then you have uh, other things such as throttling, uh, policy enforcement. And then when it comes to visibility, it's around um, how do you analyze the usage of your API from a consumer perspective? Because when you actually have an API exposed, you do have uh, multiple consumers who are using it. So you need to understand the usage of your API and then um, the information about the developers who are actually using it and things like that. And uh, the third thing is flexibility, which means can it can you have your API management deployed in a way that you have uh, multi, when you have multiple environments and then when you have the APIs that are built uh, on I mean the purpose built APIs for uh, such as like private APIs or public APIs um, you know and the internal APIs and and then the scalability uh, sort of making it highly scalable and if we get into a little bit more details um, we try to understand like this. Uh, so the, when I show this capability model, um, we do know that we have a lot of products in the market or that can do uh, good in itself when it comes to handling API management. Uh, but especially when it comes to uh, the product owner or product manager or, or you know, different um, audience who are intending to choose uh, an API management platform, it's very important that how we try to understand the different stakeholders that play a role uh, and then um, how do we relate each component so that we can actually understand uh, in terms of evaluating and then choosing uh, a right one that suits uh, your purpose because uh, it is most important that you know we understand uh, what is needed from a company perspective and then we try to uh, verify if the product can uh, provide you that. So if you see here, uh, you have a developer portal um, and as you see, it's intended for API consumers. Um, and then you have a API manager portal. Um, that's a place where you actually go ahead and uh, configure your integrations, uh, which means the APIs that you have. And then you have an API gateway, which acts as a reverse proxy that could allow you to um, send the traffic from your gateway towards the uh, backend APIs. And the consumers will have to reach the API through the gateway. and um, as you see here, there are different applications with the consumers on the top and then the providers, which means that the providers will uh, have the responsibility to expose the APIs and then the consumers have the choice to um, use the particular API um, that they need. Um, and then if you see the traffic flow uh, as part of the capability model, um, you do have the interaction that happens between the API uh, gateway uh, and then the applications or the microservices. Uh, and uh, the important part here that we need to understand is you could have a uh, common uh, API catalog that's coming from the developer portal and then a uh, API manager portal that can hold all the integrations. But then uh, when it comes to the applications and the microservices, uh, you have options where you could go with a approach that you could have central gateways and at the same time you can have dedicated gateways which means that allows the individual teams to be able to configure and use the gateway uh, in integration with the um, other components such as the developer portal and API manager portal. Um, so this is how we show the traffic flow and of course you have the Policy store, which means there are different policies that can be offered uh, by the API manager that can be configured so that the behavior of the gateway can be modified by applying those policy uh, depending on each use case. 
Um, and then if we go to the next, um, you see here, so these are the different use cases that you could identify. And uh, I'm going to say we have five areas here. And, uh, and if you see the first one, like it falls into the API gateway. Um, and then uh, it is uh, API management at the bottom. You have the API landscape and operations. That's more around how you handle the API management and also the uh, deployment aspects of how you deploy. Um, and then you have the API lifecycle, which is more important. Like we need to understand how we um, um, understand the API lifecycle uh, while we have API management in place as well, which means not only you deploy your API in a cluster, but then also you have the responsibility to expose your API in a catalog uh, by using the API management portal. Um, and then there are the key components, such as a gateway that will allow the traffic to uh, flow. And then you have the developer portal, um, which is the one-stop shop for uh, anyone in the company should be able to go there and uh, search for the API that they would like to use. Um, so that is intended for the consumers as the uh, first place to come and explore the APIs. And then if we see uh, the areas a bit detailed, um, we don't want to go into everything, but there are some things that I would like to highlight um, just to understand how uh, these different areas um, allow us to have this use case spread. So if you see, uh, the first thing is the secure, reliable, and flexible communication, uh, which means you would like to handle the authentication and authorization um, while exposing your APIs using API management platform. and. Uh, it can be done, uh, like some products, basically they could have an integrated solution that can do this and some products can actually delegate this responsibility to a um, uh, identity provider or identity broker that can actually perform this um, for the APIs. Uh, and then the other uh, features, if you see threat detection and traffic management, these can come out of the box from the API management solution. And then if we look at the, uh, Second area, uh, the important parts here are like, how do you deal the deployment topology, which means you should be able to have your solution uh, being able to deploy in multiple environments. Um, like, as I said before, uh, if you are uh, in a process of evolving the architecture, you still have to deal with the on-prem data centers. And at the same time, you want to deal with the new uh, way of uh, deploying applications into the cloud. Um, and then we need to understand how do we automate the platform in terms of uh, empowering the developers to be able to do the self-service around their APIs, all the way from uh, building an API to exposing an API in the API catalog. Um, and other things, um, as it implies, that how do you upgrade the platform and configuration. And then the third thing is the API lifecycle. Um, this is more around how do you uh, deal with the publication of your API, which means you need some governance around the type of the APIs that you are publishing. And then also you need to have a, uh, a way to discover the APIs uh, in the catalog, like you want to tag the APIs or you want to classify the APIs, uh, depend depending on the dimensions that you consider, mainly like who is gonna be consuming. And then you need to uh, deal with the uh, version management, like how do you, um, deal with versioning your API, and then how do you make sure that um, it's uh, specified uh, in the appropriate way uh, when it comes to um, dealing with the API management platform? And then how do you notify the changes? Um, and then the fourth one, uh, this is more around how do you enable the developers? Um, as I said before, it's around the self-support um, and then uh, the access provisioning and collaboration in the community, which means how could you actually promote your APIs uh, um, through collaboration? And then how can you have a community of developers who can constantly um, discuss around the APIs and then how they are uh, leveraging the API management capabilities? And if we go to the last one, the API economy, um, this is very important where um, in the company where we have different teams who are actually using or reusing the APIs 
um, we need to understand how do we log the activity and then how do we do the audit uh, of the users um, and then about the business value reporting and, and, and contract management. And also you might want some advanced analytics uh, in some cases where let's say you have a API that have, that's gone public and then you, you have a potentially large number of using, uh, users using the APIs uh, and then the service level reporting. So these are the things uh, that I could say like the five areas. And now I, if I quickly jump into the architecture. So when we have a, um scenario where we need to build an api management platform uh, that has um, the capabilities that i just showed before um, if not everything or if not the new ones that can come up in the future but most of them that are uh, important or uh, or very much needed to the particular team who is implementing the solution or using this um, so the, if you look at it uh, you have an api manager um, and then you have a API gateway that's gonna be communicating with the API manager. Uh, and then you have the developer portal and uh, it depends on different products, but you could also have the possibility to have the developer portal integrated with the API manager, uh, but still you have the possibility to divide the access around it so that not uh, everyone needs to access both, uh, but it depends on different products and then the important part here is that like when you have an API gateway, um, the key considerations uh, that we look around in common are what is the response time, which means when you actually expose your API using an API gateway, uh, what's the overhead that it's gonna add uh, while the API traffic is occurring, uh, which means let's say your API um, without a gateway, if it's gonna render a response in 30 milliseconds, like you need to make sure that the gateway doesn't add uh, not more than let's say five or seven. So which means you need to benchmark um, the response time based on the uh, usage of your API and the uh, other factors that affect the consumers. And then when it comes to the API manager, um, it plays a key role well, that allows um, you to configure the API with all the features or the use cases built around the specific API manager platform management platform, but uh, it's also important that you have a possibility to uh, programmatically interact with the API manager, which means the selected platform should have the specific APIs or the endpoints that you could actually use when you are interacting with the API manager, because not always we would like to just do things manually or use the user interface. And the developer portal, uh, it plays a big role when it comes to make sure that it's branded as per your organization and then it's easy to use, giving the best uh, user experience, um, and also uh, allowing the possibility to discover the APIs from different teams. Um, so the goal here is like, how can we build a, a API catalog using a developer portal primarily? And then you could also have uh, other things in the developer portal that can actually sort of um, guide the developers to, uh, look at such as the documentation around building APIs or having some uh, recipes around uh, building APIs. Uh, and if you see the bottom container platform, um, in this case, I would uh, point to something like Kubernetes or let's say OpenShift that can act as a platform where it can host your API management solution. Um, it is very important that um, the deployment environment that we choose to uh, deploy the solution is uh, scalable. And also we need to think in a way uh, where we not only deal with a um, only cloud-based, but we might have a hybrid environment where you need to deal with the solution having to be deployed in multiple places. Um, when I say places like the hybrid, um, I mean the on-prem and cloud um, and things like that, like both. Uh, so as we saw before, there are a lot of uh, you know, use cases and then we have at least three to four components that are involved. We need to understand how do we draw a perspective around this or how do we simplify when we have to approach uh, an API management solution from a generic perspective. And uh, so I would say like you have a scenario where you have the 
APIs uh, that are built that can be public or private or internal. Um, so not every API can be of these three types, but you know it can be one of these at least. Uh, then you need to look at it like uh, the first thing is the API provider who is actually responsible to build and develop the API and deploy it, and of course expose it. And then the consumers who are actually um, trying to consume this API. Um, so this is so important because when we build APIs, we need to keep in mind of who are our consumers uh, uh, so that we um, understand the purpose of the API and the kind of information that it needs to expose uh, when it is being developed. And uh, <clears throat> which means that it sort of again talks about the deployment models uh, because the relevance to the previous slide that I talked about the different consumers um, towards the deployment models is like, um, you, you might not want to expose an API that is in a uh, on-prem uh, environment to the public internet uh, because of security or because of the company policies. So we need to understand that we need to have different uh, deployment models for your APIs um, that makes it easy when you actually expose them. Um, and then the deployment environment. Um, uh, when it comes here, I try to show Kubernetes primarily. Um, and then, <clears throat> if we try to understand, you know, how we come across all this uh, in a uh, API management perspective, um, I will try to show you this picture because you might have organizations in these two types. Uh, one is a traditional organization model uh, that has the development, quality, and operation teams, um, different teams. And then you have this DevOps model, which is being adapted by a lot of companies these days, at least. <clears throat> uh, it might have different Scrum teams um, developing um, APIs uh, in their particular product. Uh, this means that you need to be able to have a solution that can be used in both scenarios um, in a good way. So that means that um, we need to consider, um, you know, the API management as code uh, in that sense to facilitate the uh, the ways that the APIs are being deployed from a uh, DevOps perspective. Um, so in this case, we have this open API spec. Um, that's the, uh, it, it used to be called Swagger, but it's the specification about the API. Um, um, that contains the information, such as the endpoints and a lot of things. And most of you might know what it is. And then the code, uh, and then the infrastructure code, um, it can be, um, you know, the infrastructure code that is used to, um, you know, deploy your containers um, and then things like that. And then the integration config, uh, in this case particularly, this is more around what is the configuration that is required to, expose the API, not only in the uh, container platform, but also make it available for consumption from an API catalog. This means um, this will have an additional uh, set of items that are part of the configuration. And you could handle this by um, specifying them in the open API spec itself, or you could have other ways to do this, uh, depending on how you want to do it. Uh, and then the API management configuration, this is more concerned with the API gateway, which means the API gateway um, uh, needs the configuration that it needs to look for when it actually gets a request from a particular um, consumer or the client. Uh, it needs to understand, so it's gonna make interactions with the API manager. Um, so when you actually configure an API, um, you're gonna have the configuration and then the deployment config, of course. This is more around uh, the deployment. So when we look at this, we need to have a good framework that can actually try to uh, facilitate in a good way uh, when we provision uh, not only the API, but also the API management uh, into the API management platform. Uh, <clears throat> so we've been exploring and, uh, and uh, I have start, started to see that GitOps brings uh, a lot of value to this. But uh, just to give a quick introduction around GitOps, uh, it's an operating model for Kubernetes uh, that provides the guidelines to unify the deployment um, management and then the monitoring for the containerized clusters. Um, 
so, <clears throat> so what does it mean here? So when you have the CI CD pipelines the, and the Git workflows, uh, they are applied to both operations and development. And as you see, these are the different benefits that you get. Um, I would not go through everything, but let's get into uh, you know how it is relevant to API management. So <clears throat> before we get there, uh, we might want to understand uh, what is the difference that it makes when you have a CI pipeline, uh, especially when we call it GitOps CI pipeline. Um, so this is more around the pipeline's responsibility to perform an update to the application manifest with the new image version, which means uh, when we actually build and push a new image to a container registry, um, we still have a responsibility to make sure the Kubernetes manifest is updated uh, or, or they, you know, if let's say if you're using Helm chats or, or you know, different uh, templates to deploy the application. Um, so the P pipeline have a responsibility to do the part of updating the image. Uh, and this is the difference uh, when compared to the traditional pipeline. And then you have, to understand uh, the flow, like you know, this is what we mean here. So if you notice here, it's this is the part we are talking here. Like you know, how do we update the manifest? Um, and then when it comes to the continuous deployment, this is around the automation of the entire release, uh, which means uh, <coughs> you. I'm sorry, sorry Raghu. Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. uh, you have uh, almost uh, crossed your time. Uh, we have no sorry. time for questions. Uh, if you could quickly wrap up, that will be very helpful. Yeah, yeah, I'm almost at the end. Um, so, so in in yeah. short, uh, basically, uh, I would like to summarize. Like, you know, GitOps uh, is a modern approach when you want to deal with uh, API management um, in terms of uh, using it uh, more efficiently and empowering the operations and development. Uh, but that's it from my end. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Raghu. Uh, uh, Lots of uh, interesting things to uh, understand from uh, Raghu's talk. Uh, 